Hello and welcome to part four of my mini-series, showing you some of the steps I go through in preparation for a flight. Coming up in this episode, we'll check the NOTAMs, the Notices to Airmen. We'll make sure there are no airspace restrictions, examine the airfield charts and take a quick look at the weather forecast. So we have a lot to get through today. We have our route from Biggin Hill to Sherburn in Elmet already planned. What we need to do now is make sure that there aren't any temporary restrictions, airspace restrictions along the way. Make sure there's no unusual activity going on that we might blunder into, such as an air display or a fly past, for example. Perhaps some of the facilities or uh, radio navigation aids are unserviceable. We need to know about that. And most importantly, the weather, of course. Is the weather going to be suitable for our flight? Now, for NOTAMs, notices to airmen, Sky Demon is actually pretty good at doing this because it generates a list of all the NOTAMs for your route along the right hand column here under the NOTAM panel on the PC version and also. Uh, on the iPad. But what uh, Sky Demon is particularly good at is it will actually illustrate those areas that are affected by the uh, NOTAMs on the route. And you can see one here and if I hover over it it says model flying scheduled from the surface to 2,000 feet. There's another one here, captive balloon slash kite scheduled. So Sky Demon's pretty useful um, at looking at NOTAMs, but what I tend to do first of all is I go to the NATS website and the AIS, the Aeronautical Information Service. I click on NOTAM and I select normally narrow route brief if it's an A to B flight. There are other options available. And then I type in here departure aerodrome EJ, EGKB for Biggin Hill and then Sherbin in Elmet is EGCJ. I'm going to mark IFR and VFR. I put in the flight level that I'm going to be flying up to, so I'm going to put in 70 there. And for my narrow route width, so this is the column of air airspace that you're going to examine for NOTAMs. And I usually put in a 50 mile width there, so I can be 25 miles either side of my route and it's going to give me a NOTAM for that route. So it allows for a little bit of uh, leeway. Then in the route section you have to type in your route, so we'll do that here. Um, it doesn't, you don't have to put in every waypoint. It needs to show obviously the route as best as you can show it. Okay, so then what you get is your, your information bulletin, your NOTAMs here, and it's showing that there's no NOTAMs at Biggin Hill, there's no NOTAMs at Sherbin and Elmet. And then you've got an en route section here, um, and let's just have a look at some of these. And some of these NOTAMs are sort of in funny language and in abbreviated code, and sometimes you might need to go and have a look at what these things mean. Here we go. This one here, crane, operating position, and then it gives you the coordinates. Cranfield, up to height 98 feet. Well, we're not really going to be interested in that, are we? Here's another one here. Farnborough North, lower airspace radar service, frequency 132.8, not available from 5 in the evening till 8 at night, worth knowing. So you get the picture. It gives you an idea of what's going on at the aerodromes that you're flying to or planning to divert to and it gives you sort of information about the serviceability of equipment and navigation aids along the route and any obstacles or any fly paths or anything like that along the route. After NOTAMs, I check for airspace restrictions. There are none effective for today, but in the summer this list can grow quite long. This is the air information live with a summary. I always do a final check before flight by calling the AIS information line. If there's been a national emergency, for example, such as the Grenfell Tower disaster, an emergency restriction of flying could have come into effect suddenly. Now, it should really go without saying that weather is the big issue, really, isn't it, when you're flying? You need to make sure that you can fly legally and you can land safely and navigate and aviate safely. Now, if I'm VFR, I'm obviously looking for conditions where the cloud is high enough and the visibility is good. If I'm IFR, I start to get more concerned about icing levels, so what's the temperature at say two, three thousand feet? If I enter cloud, am I going to find I have ice building up on the wings? Um, for both VFR and IFR, in fact, wind is obviously important. 
if we start seeing ground wind speeds of 20, 25 knots, I'm starting to get a little bit worried about whether that's safe to fly. Um, the visibility, of course, for uh, applies to IFR conditions as well, uh, IMC conditions. If visibility is below 1500 meters, then I won't be able to land or take off. So I really checking the weather for your flight is, is obviously exceptionally important. And I'm gonna show you a little bit of how we do that here. I'm not gonna go into it in massive detail. In the days leading up to flight, I monitor a host of websites to gauge the chances of flight. They include BBC Weather, XC Weather, and metcheck.com. For pressure charts, fronts, icing levels, and cloud cover, I use Aviation Weather Europe, avwx.info. I go to Weather Online to check cloud based forecasts and also NOAA's Air Resources Laboratory, providing skew T diagrams that can help you with cloud bases and cloud tops. But on the day of flight, I'm studying METARs, TAFs, the rainfall radar and charts on the Met Office website. Let's have a look at the weather for a recent flight I conducted to Leicester. Here is Metform F215, the UK low level forecast. Looking at the graphic on the left, I can see that my flight to Leicester will stay within Zone C, with a warm front heading slowly north to the north of my route. Next, I look at Row C on the right. It tells me that visibility will be 25 kilometres at best in nil weather. In isolated spots, that means 25% of Area C, visibility may be reduced to 3,000 metres with BR, which stands for mist, and minus DZ, meaning light drizzle, mainly near upslopes. This line means that mountain waves may occur in the zone at flight level 80 north of 51 degrees north, giving vertical speeds of 700 feet per minute. There'll be widespread moderate turbulence north of 51 degrees north, occasional severe turbulence and occasional hill fog. It's going to be a bumpy flight with the chance of some challenging visibility. Under the cloud column, we can see that we'll have broken or overcast, locally few or scattered, cumulus cloud and stratocumulus cloud with moderate turbulence and bases between 1500 and 2500 feet and tops between 4000 feet and 6000 feet. Occasional, but isolated on the leeward side of mountains, there'll be broken stratus with bases between 600 and 1200 feet, tops of 1500 feet, locally bases at 300 feet around windward coasts and upslopes. This all tells me that cloud bases could be as low as 600 feet, lower around the windward coasts and hills. The final column here shows the freezing level, 7 to 9000 feet, higher in the far southwest. Down here will give you the outlook. A cold front is moving in into zone B. It's looking like a decidedly IMC day with the chance of some VFR windows. F214 is the UK spot wind forecast chart. This tells us that at 2000 feet the winds are going to be from the west at 40 to 45 knots with temperatures at 2000 feet of 8 or 9 degrees Celsius. Next I'd have to look at the Metars and TAFs for the whole of my route. We'll check Gatwick Airport's forecast here. The TAF or Terminal Aerodrome forecast is valid from 6am on the 28th to midday on the 29th. The wind will be southwesterly at 10 knots, visibility will be greater than 10 kilometers, cloud will be scattered at 1500 feet above the aerodrome level, but there'll be periods when the cloud will be broken at 1200 feet. There's a 40% probability that there will be periods between 8am and midday on the 28th where visibility will drop to 8,000 metres in drizzle and clouds may be broken at 600 feet. It turned out in fact to be an IFR departure from Biggin Hill, entering cloud at about 1,500 feet above sea level. It remained IMC all the way to Leicester where the cloud broke up and there was even some sunshine. I will go through this pre-flight weather briefing before attempting my flight to Sherburn in Elmet. So now we've decided that the weather is uh, okay for us to fly, we need to have a good study of the aerodrome charts. Um, 
The first place to look, I'd say, is the Aeronautical Information Service again, which is uh, provided under license by NATS. We go to the AIP, we go to the Aerodrome Index Specific, and then we go to the list of these aerodromes here and find our aerodrome, Sherburn in Elmet. Uh, we have our aerodrome chart here, and this shows us the uh, layout of the runways, the taxiways, the apron, and so on and so forth. And then we've got textual data. And this is basically everything you need to know about the aerodrome. We've got all sorts of stuff here. We've got uh, obstacles in the area. We've got the runway physical characteristics, whether it's grass or tarmac, the length. Um, we've got the takeoff distances, the takeoff runs, the landing distances. So this is these are the figures that we use alongside our performance figures to see that we can actually land and take off from there and some information about the lights. And then if you scroll down a bit further, you'll find it will tell you wh what direction normally the circuits are, at what height the circuits are to be flown, whether or what kind of join they would like you to do, and also um, noise abatement procedures. You can buy subscriptions to commercial flight guides, either digital, like this one, or in hard copy. And it's worth checking the aerodrome websites because they often carry extra information which may help you better understand the local procedures. So that's pretty much it. Most of the pre-flight preparation is done. I'm shortly going to be heading off to the aerodrome to get the aircraft ready. And in the next episode you can see how all this pre-flight preparation comes together as we actually fly the route that we've planned here from Biggin Hill to Sherburn in Elmet. Do join me then.